I'm sorry I can't be with you today. My name is Andy Meir and I'm director of the Creative Futures Institute in the School of Creative and Cultural Industries. Uh, I was asked to give a talk today about some of the issues and concerns arising from the use of social media. We hear a lot about advocacy and everybody's jumping on board with social media now, but what about some of the challenges you have with bringing it into the classroom? How does it affect that learning experience? How does it affect the way in which students respond to what they're being asked to do? I've been using social media in the classroom for quite a few years now and taught courses around about a decade ago that looked at the way in which some of these issues was becoming apparent. How do people negotiate privacy, for example? We had lots of discussions about whether students should put their work into public environments or whether they should be entitled to keep them private. And it's interesting to see some of these conversations emerge now around social media where a lot of the innovation that's taking place is directed specifically to putting work out there into the public domain. Um, and there's some really creative examples of how people are doing that. Uh, I learned of one course in America uh, just yesterday, actually, which is using a new technology, Google Glass, within the classroom to create new learning experiences. So actually, some of the debates about social media are also still very much embryonic. And I think one of the challenges you have still when entering the classroom is trying to find the sort of level of user interest and really access and ability uh, at that very early stage within the teaching. Uh, how do you find out what students are using, what they're comfortable using, what kinds of perceptions they have about the kind of social spaces that they enjoy with friends versus the spaces that are for professional work. And one of the challenges I think that's taken place over the years is that these places have blurred. But in fact, they're not just social networking places now, they're, they're also professional networking places. And that's partly, I think, why as a school we're quite keen on pushing students out into the public domain where their work can be consumed, interpreted, critiqued, but also doing it in a way that allows them to feel confident with what they've done. I think one of the things you have to kind of start with when trying to establish what are the kind of ethical social issues that surround teaching and using social media within the context of teaching is to actually understand your community. Um, spend some time figuring out what your students are comfortable with, um, what they might know, what they might not know, and what they'd like to learn about. I think one of the assumptions is that social media is just these platforms that we hear about in the news, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, but in fact there's lots of other platforms that people are using. You might even discover that there are platforms that you're not aware of that are used within a particular uh, professional group, and those kinds of platforms might be particularly appealing for people to use. Um, a good example of this is LinkedIn, which is a platform that isn't talked about as much as a social pla a networking platform, but is highly useful in, in a professional context. So I think, again, trying to figure out your audience <laughs> as you go into teaching is crucial to help negotiate some of these issues as you go through it. It's uh, my experience that, in fact, um, if you can develop the kind of culture of support and acceptance and value around putting stuff into the public domain, then some of these issues can become much more manageable. Um, but at the same time, I've been involved with projects in the last year where we've tried to undertake uh, social media teaching interventions, which still polarise classes. You find people that are very keen on it and get very much into it, and others that just don't feel comfortable still. And I think that Again, you have to kind of think about this in, in a, a more holistic sort of way. Um, not all platforms do the same sort of thing. Not all platforms require the same degree of sort of visibility as each other. So you might find people that are willing to, to use text and write things in a relatively anonymous kind of way um, and protect their sort of visible image um, from that public domain whilst others that want to be shooting videos and putting them onto YouTube and so on. So I think, again, thinking about your class as a, as a, a kind of production team where each member in it may have a different kind of role is a helpful way to think through and negotiate some of these issues. And it might be that some people in the class express their work in one way and others do it in another way. And that's, that's one mechanism through which you can kind of overcome these challenges. Um, I think there's still a, a, a problem around how universities respond to, to this. Um, my sort of bugbear over the years has been to say that I think universities have, have really been behind in their utilisation of virtual learning environments. This phrase that's still 
underpins the university environment, but in fact, the best innovation that we see in social media and in digital technology generally is happening outside of those environments. It's happening in places that we can um, use for free or that are going to be here for a couple of years, but perhaps not for 10 years. So the kind of investments that we make as a university, I think, need to change around that very sort of dynamic structure that operates under underpins social media. So again, to go back to the kind of way in which you negotiate these concerns about ethics and, and privacy and just generally feeling comfortable using social media if you're a student is to try to take on board that climate in which they're already using it because most of the students that are already uh, that are entering your class are already using social media in some capacity the challenge is to find out exactly what and how you can respond to that so out of this I guess there are three key issues that I think are crucial to think about when embarking on using social media in the classroom and with students. The first is to really kind of come to terms with what your user group are comfortable with. Um, you kind of have to get to know their level, you have to get to know their comfort zone, uh, find out what they've used, find out what they're involved with, find out what they like using in a kind of educational context. I did a, did a TEDx talk recently at Warwick University and it was amazing to me to see how many students use TEDx videos or TED videos as part of their kind of data capture, as part of their learning experience. And I think that we are actually missing a trick by not drawing on, on those kind of extended resources that exist around our subjects, but which are being provided by other, um, other sort of vehicles beyond the kind of typical lecture format. So find out what they're comfortable with. Second one is to try to understand some of the concerns that arise in the context of social media. So what sorts of things are they worried about? What kinds of aspects of their learning would be uh, jeopardized uh, from their perspective if they were to be doing this in a social media context. But the, the third thing, I think it's a more crucial one, the third one is to figure out how those social media platforms can make their learning experience a richer experience. And I think if you can do that, um, then you can really uh, allow students to feel much more empowered within those environments. If you can make it a creative learning experience through social media, then those anxieties about privacy uh, are, are, I think, going to be much, much more diminished. And actually, if they, if students feel comfortable with putting their stuff out, out there and online, then I think it also enriches their, their career as well. They can have work out that they feel proud of. Another side to it, of course, is the lecturer's experience and, and whether, in fact, you as a professor want to be public and visible and doing things out there as well. And I think this is a, a this is a problem that's actually often overlooked. There's a kind of assumption that the professor or the lecturer has to deliver the best learning experience no matter what, but equally many lecturers don't feel comfortable using um, these kinds of public environments either. I think that's changed a lot, but, um, but we still need to do more to allow uh, lecturers to feel comfortable within these spaces. And the only way I think we can do that is by providing kind of courses, but also trying to promote social media within the culture of the university to make it something that is seen as important on a kind of daily basis so that people feel that they they have to be there and in the process hopefully find a value in being there as well and see that their their own sort of professional development is inextricable from being present in social media. I think when you get that you have the chance to really infect the rest of the learning experience with that kind of um, confidence and curiosity and um, and again those concerns about the um, the, the kind of uh, privacy issues, the concerns about putting stuff out there, the worries you might have by late, uh, with late, leaving a trail of, of what you've done um, will diminish quite significantly because let's not remember, let's not forget the, um, the fact is that any single tweet is going to disappear within minutes. It won't be seen by most of the people that follow you in fact. So we can kind of get too anxious about these kinds of worries. Um, we can focus on, on one sort of thing that potentially might be embarrassing or something we'd rather forget. But in actual fact, within a couple of hours of having done something, nobody's really paying attention anymore. And I think that sort of uh, continuous development of, of our personalities online is a crucial part of this. So I think you have to encourage students to look at this as a developmental experience and not to feel that you, you kind of need to be judged just on what you've done at the start, but actually what you're doing at the end is also important. So to not feel worried about what's out there already and if it's not quite the quality you would want it to be. Everything should be seen, I think, as a kind of work in progress. 
Um, and if you can develop that kind of uh, disposition within students, I think you have much more chances of, of developing a, a kind of rich learning environment uh, through social media. Thank you.